morning. Am I, I don't think I'm on back there. Good morning, hello. Can you hear me? My thing is on. It's just not super loud. Okay, I'll talk like this and then you can hear me. All right, last week I felt like I was super loud, so. Um, all right, good morning to all of you who are here and all of you who are worshiping online this morning. It's good to be with you. We've got three or four inches of snow outside, so uh, there's more here than I anticipated, so it's uh, good to see you. Um, a couple of announcements this morning. Those of you who were here last week knew that it was pretty cold in the sanctuary. And initially, we thought maybe we just didn't have the thermostat set at the right uh, temperature, but turns out our boiler needed a repair, and so that was made, and so now it's nice and comfy in here today. Um, and so thank you to Peter Graham for uh, figuring that out and being on top of that. We really appreciate it. Um, I want to announce that uh, on Thursday, February 3rd, we will have a special church conference uh, we had our regular church conference in the fall, but we had not uh, completed our nomination slate, and that has to be voted on at a church conference. And so part of our ad council meeting on February 3rd will be a brief church conference to uh, vote on that nomination slate, and um, I'm required to make at least two announcements in worship um, so people have the opportunity to hear about it and attend if they want. So. This is my first announcement, and you're more than welcome to be there. Um, and then I also just want to point out uh, there are a couple opportunities in the next month for leadership training and laity gatherings. And so um, the leadership training for Prairie North is, uh, and Jamie and I didn't communicate very well on this, we're in the Prairie North District, so what's in the bulletin is incorrect. Our leadership training is... Um, the 29th, and there is a flyer out in the uh, Narthex um, about that, and feel free to take it. Um, I think it's $5 to participate online, and so I hope that you will consider that. And then there's also um, a laity event um, that we'll have in the bulletin next week that uh, you're all invited to. Other announcements? I think Claire has one. Okay, sometime in the last week or so, you would have gotten a letter in the mail with a pledge card um, asking you to consider your commitment to the church for 2022. Um, thank you to the people who've sent those back. If you haven't had a chance to yet, you can bring or bring a mail, bring uh, the, the physical card back, or you can check on the website. We do have an electronic card that will come back to us through email. And up across the top of the website, you'll see Donate. And if you hover on that, you'll see Pledge Card underneath. Or you can go to the Donate page, and then there's a button there that'll take you to the Pledge Card. So um, thank you for considering that commitment, and we appreciate your support. Thanks, Claire. Anybody else with announcements this morning? All right, then I invite you to stand as you are able and join in our call to worship. us responsively and then we'll sing our opening hymn we have come to worship God the living God who calls prophets and teachers to bear witness we have come to praise God the Almighty God who answers the forces of hatred and hurt with the power of grace we have come to worship God all gracious God who chooses even you and me to receive and carry the word of life and hope. All glory to God. And our opening hymn is O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing, which is a familiar Wesleyan text, but it's to a different tune, which is a little more upbeat and exciting. So uh, let us sing together.
verse 5. Spirit of the living God, we praise and adore you for empowering us to claim membership of the body of Christ, a gift received through the fullness of your grace. Empower us anew, we pray, with tongues of fire and hearts of love to proclaim the reconciling word among people. Remind us that we are all members of the one body, and if one member suffers, we all suffer. May we, as the body of Christ in this place, be the best evidence of your love by declaring and witnessing to this as the year of the Lord's favor for all people. We give thanks that all of us are Christ's body and rejoice in each one being a part of it. Accept our adoration and praise for these great gifts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We don't have any children in the sanctuary, but I hope that we have some online this morning. Um, Lindsay's going to put up the next slide, which has a recipe on it. Who here likes to bake? A few people. Now, what's your favorite thing to bake? I'm going to ask Lori, what's your favorite thing to bake? Cookies. Cookies. Diane. Apple crisp, okay. What about uh, Claire? Chocolate chip cookies. Anybody else have a favorite thing that they like to bake? Jack. Brownies. Brownies, excellent. And bread, yes. Yes, lots of good things to bake, and we have a lot of good bakers in our congregation. So one of the things that I really like to bake is scones. And I usually make a cranberry orange scone, but up here on the screen today, I have a recipe for traditional scones. So this is the really basic recipe, and then you could add whatever you want. And lots of people add lots of different things to scones, depending on what they like. My son, Spencer, likes me to put chocolate chips in the scones, of course. Um, but anyway, so as we look at this recipe, we have flour, sugar, baking powder, baking soda, cold butter, an egg, which I don't normally put in mine, and, um, and buttermilk. All right, now, let's say I decide that I'm going to leave out, I, I don't have any baking powder or any baking soda, and I leave that out. What will happen, Lori? They will be flat. So that doesn't work very well if we don't have our soda and our baking powder. Now, what if we left out um, the flour, Diane? <laughs> there just would not be much there at all, because flour is the main ingredient. You got to have the flour. What about that butter? Could we leave that out? No. And uh, sugar, we probably could leave it out, but it wouldn't be very flavorful. And um, I also would put one other thing in there that's not listed. You know what it is? Salt. Because salt, it's not going to taste salty if you put a pinch of salt in. But what does salt do in recipes? It enhances the flavor, so you can really taste everything together better when you've got salt. So my whole point today is we need all of those things in the recipe for the scones to turn out right. And if we don't have all of them, they are not going to be very tasty, are they? Now, we could add some other things, as I said. The scones I make, I usually put cranberry, dried cranberries and some orange zest. And Spencer likes when I put the orange zest and chocolate chips. And I have a friend who jokes with me all the time. He wants me to try lavender in my scones. I've never cooked with lavender or baked with lavender. I may have to try that. But anyway, those ingredients are not absolutely necessary, right? We can make the scones without them. But 
they do add something special, don't they? So in the body of Christ, all of us have gifts that are important, and actually they are essential, just like the ingredients in the recipe are essential for it to turn out right. And sometimes, in addition to maybe um, a basic gift, we may have multiple gifts or even a special gift that isn't absolutely necessary but can certainly make our body here better. So today we are talking about how important it is for all of us and our gifts, that all of our gifts are essential for the body of Christ, and no one should ever feel like they don't have something to offer, because we all have a gift that is important, just like in this recipe. So let us pray, and if you all here would repeat after me, along with the kids at home, uh, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for our gifts. Help us to contribute them so the body of Christ is complete. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 31a. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the... Let me start again. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit... We were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, there would be the body. Where would, be, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor can the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. Or if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but strive for the greater gifts? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
I have quite a few friends um, that I met in seminary or who have become my clergy colleagues who grew up in the South. And one of the phrases that they use on occasion is, all y'all, all y'all. It's another way of saying everyone or everybody. But when it's used, I often have to think about what that really means. Since it's not used in our everyday vernacular of the North, I have to kind of stop and pause, which we do not need to do when we hear everyone or everybody. All y'all often comes with that gesture that looks like making a circle with your hands. All y'all. And maybe I do that or people do that in the North because we don't hear it very often. So the motion just kind of helps us understand it even better. But the combination of the words and the gesture make it clear that every single person is included. Now, in many ways, our text this morning is almost a repeat of last week's. You may think, didn't we just hear this last week? Well, we didn't. It is the second half of chapter 12, but it is very, very similar. There is just a fine distinction separating the first part of chapter 12 in 1 Corinthians and the second part. Part 1, verses 1 to 12, that we talked about last week, says that All the gifts go together to make up the whole. Today's text, verses 13 to 31a, says that each gift goes together to make up the whole. That probably sounds exactly the same, doesn't it? So I'm going to say it again. Part one, all the gifts go together to make up the whole. Today, it says... Each gift goes together to make up the whole. In other words, last week was a focus on how all of our gifts go together to make up the body of Christ. Remember, we talked about the puzzle and how all of those go together. And the emphasis was on unity and piecing together all the gifts. This week, this morning, the focus is on the importance of each individual gift and its contribution to the whole. It's not a huge distinction, and yet there is one. Paul is one of those writers, the Greek that he uses when he wrote the letter was very complicated. It would be one of those heady books if we were reading it in Greek where we'd have to read it maybe a couple of times, or as we were reading the letter, we'd have to read the paragraph or the sentence over again. And when you look at it in the Bible, if you were, if you looked in the Bible in your pew this morning, you might see that you have to read those sentences over again. And and it was kind of apparent today, right? I know that Lori practiced reading that, and yet she had to stop a couple of times and reread it because it's a complicated way of writing. But the point is today that your gifts are important regardless of how small or big they are or how visible they are to the rest of the body. You matter. Your contributions, whatever they are, make a difference to the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is at its best when we all contribute our individual gifts and work together. All y'all have a place. And the recipe that we talked about just a few minutes ago helps us to see that a little bit more clearly. Now, I do love to bake, and I think I do a pretty good job with it. And unlike cooking, where measurements don't have to be exact, right, with chili, for example, you can put in some extra tomato or you can put in some extra beans or some extra meat or extra spice, depending on how you like it. But with baking, it's a little bit more scientific, at least those base ingredients. And they all have a purpose and they need to be the right amount to work together. So for example, with bread, flour is the main ingredient, but water, yeast, or some other kind of leavening agent like baking powder, baking soda, and salt are all necessary. 
The yeast makes the bread rise. The salt brings out the flavor. The flour provides the gluten and the substance to the bread, and the water brings it all together. Helps it stick together, right? So all of those ingredients have a purpose or a gift, if you will, to the recipe. And they must be in the bread, or it just won't work to bring together a loaf. Now, there are many types of bread, because there's many types of flour, and of course, we can get fancy with bread just like we can with scones, although, and probably the same kinds of things. Um, we might use nuts or fruit or even vegetables in a bread to make it different. And even if it's not a yeast bread, it still needs leavening, which like the scones comes with through baking powder or bacon soda or a combination of the two. So the body of Christ, a congregation, the church, is similar to the recipe. If all the individual gifts or ingredients or parts or people are not present, the body or the recipe won't work as it should. The body of Christ needs those who are good at understanding and interpreting scripture. It needs others who are good at verbally sharing the message of Christ with others they may not know well, as well as people that they do know particularly well. The body needs those with the gift of working with children, being patient, caring, inclusive, and able to communicate at their level. The body of Christ also needs people who are good at taking care of buildings and all that goes with that. The church needs people who are friendly and hospitable and don't mind going up to a stranger and saying hello and welcoming them. We need people who are good at details, but also people who are good at looking at the big picture. The church needs people who are good at working with other people on a team, but there are also people who really do better working alone and we need those folks too. Each individual's gifts are necessary to carry out God's mission in the world. Now last week I named many gifts that are needed just to make our worship service happen. And as I thought about it later, um, at least the way that we do it right at this moment, I realized that I had forgotten even a few things when we were up to like 13 people. But I had forgotten to name a few, um, a few tasks. And that's how it is in the church. We <clears throat> have all sorts of people who work behind the scenes, but if they didn't do what they do, then things wouldn't run like they do. Connie Warden, for example, changes the banners up here on the wall and these pyramids, the clods that are on the lectern and the altar and the pulpit. We probably don't even think about it, do we? But with each liturgical season, these colors change, and so she does that. And we never see her do that. She comes in during the week and it just happens. She also changes the sign outside that people see when they drive by. And a couple of us pitch in and help on occasion, but for the most part, she and Larry do that. Now, Connie does a whole bunch of other things, but those two things you may not have realized that she did or does. Jamie, our administrative assistant, types, copies, and folds the bulletin each week, and produces the slides. But she also inputs the attendance. We keep track of who's here each and every week, and there's a sheet in the back that our AV person typically checks off who's here, and then that gets inputted into our database. And we do that so that if someone isn't here for five weeks, we can reach out to them and say, hey, we miss you, Why? You know, what's going on, are you okay? There are also a team of people who count the offering every week. I mentioned Peter last week as someone who unlocks the building and does all sorts of things around the building. But did you know that he also changes the wicks in the candle lighters? <laughs> that gold thing that 
Peter or someone carries up here to light these candles has a big long wick in it. And somebody has to keep track of when it's been used up and replace it. And Peter does that. All of those things are important. And we don't even think about it. They, some of those tasks are very small. And yet, if they don't happen, things don't run like they should. Now, there are others who could do those jobs, and we certainly try to recruit new people to help in those areas. Zach wasn't here very long before I said, hey, you want to help out with the AV in the back? And that's been great, because now we have one more person in the mix so that folks don't have to do it quite as often. Sometimes we don't always do a great job at inviting people to use their gifts. And sometimes it's because we have a hard time letting go so that others can use their gifts. I remember in one of the churches I served where there were a few folks who were involved in almost everything they could be involved in. And their gifts were needed and they were extremely valued for sure. But this was a congregation where um, the congregation changed pretty regularly. There was a group of folks who'd been there for a really long time, but it was a, a church where people were moving in and out of the community, and so you'd have new folks. They might be a member for a year or two, and then they'd have to move away, and there was a lot of that going on. So when new people joined, one way to keep them engaged and coming to worship is to help them find out what their gifts are and how they can use those gifts. And so as more and more new people came, I had to say several times to some of those longtime members, I know that you love serving on this committee or in this ministry area or whatever it was, and you do a wonderful, wonderful job, but you do a lot and serve in several areas in the life of the church. And we have a new person, and their interest and gift would fit really well on this committee or ministry or whatever it was. And so I would say, I'm wondering if you could step down so that they could have an opportunity to use their gift, or could you mentor or teach that person or work alongside them for a time until they learn if that's going to be a good fit for them so that they can serve in that area. Now, that, those could be really hard conversations sometimes because sometimes that person had done that job or task for like 10 or 20 years and feels like that's what they do best. And they love doing it. And so when someone steps, steps up to fill that role or to work alongside, well, what happens? They have new ideas. Or they might decide to do the job a little bit differently. And so that longtime member can sometimes feel a little threatened, and so they might criticize or step in or even sometimes redo something after the other person leaves to do it the old way. Or they just shut down the new person's ideas from the get-go. But the body doesn't grow both numerically or even quality-wise, without continuing to bring in new folks. Furthermore, we can't do that particular job or task forever. There needs to be people in the pipeline or in the wings who can fill those roles when that person gets sick or they have to move on or they pass away. When I was thinking about this, I couldn't help but think about Wayne Way and all the many, many, many things that he did. And, you know, when he started to retire, when he retired from being the administrative assistant, I said, you know, Wayne, I know you do a lot of stuff that no one is aware of, and we need to start thinking about what they are and start writing them down and so that if something happens to you, we know what those are and we can get somebody to do them. And of course, if we didn't have that written down, we soon figured it out, right? Like, oh no, somebody didn't put oil in the candles. Wayne Way used to do that. So now Anna does it. 
um, our custodian, but you get the point. So although our gifts are needed, sometimes we have to figure out how to make room for other gifts, others' gifts too. And the, f the f fact is, most of us have multiple gifts, and so we can serve in multiple areas. Um, but sometimes we need to let go of one of those things that we do and help somebody else discern where they might serve. Now I know what's hard about congregations our size is when we get to this size, we're a small group of people and so we have to do multiple things, right? Like we don't have a choice. Um, and the fact is that we get tired and we really would like people who aren't here very often to come back so they can help us. But that gets tricky because sometimes people aren't here because there's something going on in their life that has made life really hard and challenging and when they come in the door, it's gonna take everything they have just to get here and sit down and participate. And then if we come up after worship and say, hey, it's so good to see you, would you greet next week? <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, so we are invited, I think, as new people come or people who haven't been here a while return to graciously accept where they are, where they're at, kind of let them be for a while as they sit down the pew from us and just sing and speak. And we're invited to generously and graciously receive that gift, the gift of their presence, because that gift in itself adds something to the body, doesn't it? It's one more voice that helps us feel more complete as we worship together. But really the point of the sermon and the text today is to remember that you are part of the body, you do have gifts, and you are never too young or too old to serve the body of Christ. We never send anyone out to pasture. When Bev Esther lived at Oakcrest and I would go visit her, she would, she would say, oh, I just wish I could do more. I just can't do anything. And yet she would tell me that she would pray each and every day and she would visualize the sanctuary. And she would go down every pew and remember who used to sit where, and she would pray for each and every person. What a gift. And she also generously supported, the does, continues to generously support the church with her financial gifts. And so someone who doesn't feel like they can do much anymore actually is doing a lot to contribute to the body of Christ. I've been reading a lot lately on a thing called the Enneagram, and it's a tool for looking at the way we interact in the world. And the author I'm reading right now, her name is Suzanne Stabile, she uses the phrase, what is yours to do? In her podcasts and her books, she invites the reader or the listener to think about what is yours to do? Each of us is an essential and a necessary ingredient in the recipe that is the body of Christ. Each of us must regularly check in with ourselves and ask, what is mine to do? You are essential. Each of us is an essential worker in the body of Christ, and you matter because you are a beloved child of God and have been given gifts necessary to the body of Christ. All y'all are the body. This is the good news of Jesus Christ for us this morning. Amen. So we're going to sing, We Are the Body of Christ, if you'd stand as you're able. The hymn is 2227 in the black hymnal, if you would like um, to follow along that way, or the words are up on the screen. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We have a litany first. I was just going to say. Excuse me. Lori's going to lead us in the litany, and then we will sing. There are many members in the body of Christ, but one body. We are, we are all, all one, one body, body in Christ. Christ. Just as God arranged the human body, God has arranged the church to be members of the body of Christ. We, we are, are all, all one, one body, body in, in Christ. Christ. 
Therefore, we need each other to survive. We, we are, are all one, one body in, in Christ. Christ. We must care for one another. For together, we are the body of Christ. There are no big gifts and little gifts. My gift is no better than your gift. No one is greater than one another, for we are one in Jesus Christ. God has placed gifted people among us to equip the saints and to build God's kingdom. We rejoice that we are one body in Christ. Amen. Now we will sing together. We are the body of Christ. prayers of joy and concern, and we continue to pray for those uh, on our prayer list for Connie Hood, Donna Turner, Jan Thurlby, Kurt Mavis, Larry Warden, Pat Heinsen, Connie Taylor Nelson, Ray Meyer, and Philip Termini. God in your mercy. We also pray for Brett Bunger. Um, the PowerPoint was done before we knew of uh, his procedure. Brett had a heart attack, but um, had a angioplasty and is improving and doing well. So we are grateful for that, but prayers for healing for him are appreciated. God, in your mercy. Are there others? Oh, yes, thank you. Jackie Wills, who is the pastor over in Kingston and Herbert, she has those two churches. Um, her husband, Wayne, died this week on Wednesday, I think. And so prayers for her um, in her grief. I think that the funeral is next Saturday um, at the Kingston Church. Herbert, at the Herbert Church, excuse me. God in your mercy. Anybody else? Yeah, Sissy. A, a couple friends who have COVID. God in your mercy. I'd like to lift up Pat Fisher. She did get her diagnosis. It is um, bile duct cancer, very aggressive. She starts her chemo on Monday. God, in your mercy. Anybody else? All right, let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the fact that we have been able to gather and get to this place despite the weather. Thank you for bringing us here safely. Thank you for the opportunity to worship, to praise your name, and to remember that we all have something to contribute to the body of Christ in this place. We give you thanks and praise for those gifts that are made manifest through each and every one of us. But God, we also acknowledge that there is pain and hurt in the world. You've heard the names that we've lifted up this morning, those people who are struggling with health issues or grief. 
And we ask, oh God, that you would just surround them with your love and your care, and that you would use us to provide support and compassion. God, we continue to pray for not just those that we know or those that are experiencing hardship in our local community, but we pray for those beyond us, beyond this place, those who are living in the midst of violence, those who are struggling to find a place for uh, warmth and a place for nourishment and for health care. We pray for those who do not have uh, access to health care or to clean water. And we pray for those who are struggling after natural disaster. We know, oh God, that you continue to work through our larger church to address those concerns, but we lift them up to remind ourselves that there are many, many more people in the world who need your help and our prayers. We lift all of these things up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> we didn't have our mission moment um, a couple Sundays ago, and so Lori is going to just lift up our missions of the month uh, before we receive our offering this morning. First, I'd like to ask you to uh, pray for our committee, um, trying to get together and uh, decide on the missions that we're going to have this, um, this year. Um, I, <laughs> being mission-minded, um, I ran across this, and I just wanted to share it with you. It says, I've heard people say, I want more of a heart for missions. Jesus tells you exactly how to get it. Put your money in missions and in your church and the poor, and your heart will follow. So with that in mind, our missions this month are Rosecrans, which is up in Rockford, and um, we know that uh, the work that they do there is invaluable. Midwest Mission Distribution is located um, south of Springfield, and they uh, collect money, and also there's different um, items that you can send to them, and they send them to, out to different areas that are in need, um, help um, with flooding and fires and any type of disaster that happens in, the, in our country. And their fifth Sunday is always a good neighbor fun Sunday that we ask that um, you give, so those in our community that are in need and come to the church where we have funds that we can help them out. So I thank you for all the giving that you do through the year and uh, ask for your prayers for this week as we make selections. Thank you. So let us respond to God's word with the gifts of our tithes and offerings if the ushers would come forward. i 
dedication. God who created us, as we gather to worship you, we are conscious that we are all one body in Christ. When one part of the body is hurting, the whole body is wounded. When healing happens, the whole body is blessed. May our giving this morning bring love to the parts of Christ's body that are feeling unloved and forgotten. And may it bring justice and mercy to those parts that are oppressed and burdened. In our giving, may we find the joy of blessing the whole body of Christ. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Together We Serve, 2175, and that's in the Black Book. blessing to each of us, and we each have gifts to contribute. So go and share God's love and your gifts. Go in the name of God, the Creator, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen.